so Heidi's going to be talking to us all about how skin health, um, sorry, about how microneedling relates to skin health. Um, so Heidi, you have a presentation planned and hopefully everyone is either in or is making their way in now. So if you, um, everyone watching, if you have any questions for Heidi as she's going through, if you want to pop them in the chat box, we have someone there moderating them. Um, we're, both Heidi and I are going to switch our cameras off as she goes through, but then we'll both jump back on at the end and I will um, pass those questions on to Heidi for you. So, Heidi, welcome. Um, if you're ready, then I think we can probably get started. Yep, great, super. All right. Hi everybody, um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, why microneedling is such an integral part of my treatment portfolio and how I came to the decision um, that skin pen precision was the safest decision for a safe incision. Okay, so a little bit about the history of microneedling. Um, microneedling has been around for a long time in many different guises. Um, it was first recorded to be used uh, in 1905 um, and that was developed by a German dermatologist and he experimented with various different sized dental burrs mounted on a motor um, driven by a flexible cord and of course things evolved but he was already treating uh, scars, birthmarks and hyperpigmentation. Um, and then fast track on to 1995, which is much more of our era, and Dr. Des Ferdinandes in Philadelphia um, started to really reinvent microneedling and commercialize it and make it available um, to, to everybody else um, and using it to treat wrinkles and scars. Um, and around the same time, uh, he started to develop a stamp device um, used for inducing collagen production. For the research was developed and there have been many different types of microneedling devices, rollers, stamps, pens, freehand, um, and much more research to endorse these devices um, for treating many different skin conditions other than just scars. Um, so they all sort of catalyze on the body's innate ability to heal from a wound um, and produces or induces collagen production, um, elastin production, eliminating wrinkles and fine lines, smoothing out the skin and treated pigmented areas and brown spots. Um, so a, a wide variety um, of, of applications from microneedling and a wide variety of different microneedling devices. So if we think about what is microneedling, so microneedling is just the process of making um, tens of thousands of micro injuries into the skin. Um, so it's just the process of making those injuries to stimulate the body's um, innate ability to wound heal. So triggering this cascade effect of um, the, the wound healing response, um, which would lead to a remodeling of collagen fibers. So collagen induction therapy um, triggers the wound healing response. So sensory nerve endings initially receiving um, the information there's been an injury and sending the message to the brain, um, stimulating the cell membranes um, and the mast cells simulated that all lead to the release of neurotransmitters, a complex signaling process made up of growth factors and cytokines instigating the proliferation of platelets, fibroblasts, epithelial and endothelial cells that will immediately instigate the natural healing response leading to the repair and the regeneration of new healthy tissue. So we have to make these tiny precise injuries to trigger that response. Um, so the key there is that they are tiny precise injuries. So always remaining focused that we want to do the minimum amount of damage uh, to get maximum effect and the risk of course of over damaging the skin and your body believing it needs to make scar tissue to repair and recover. So this wound healing response will not only instigate 
epidermal repair, but it'll also instigate dermal regeneration. Um, so there's long-term effects as well as the short-term effects. Um, so the production of cutaneous collagen and the fortification of epidermal tissue and increased integrity and density of the dermal matrix. So these long-term effects start to appear more in the phase three, the final phase of the wound healing response, where this immature collagen um, will start to um, maturate and mature um, and reorganize itself into um, more mature type 1 collagen, um, giving a long-lasting response. So these sort of effects we start to notice um, typically um, a month after the treatment, um, but the benefits can carry on for over a year um, post-treatment. So studies have um, been conducted to prove the results of microneedling, um, which we're now able to do with taking biopsies of the skin, taking scans of the skin. So many different modalities have been used to measure the results and prove the efficacy of microneedling. Um, so um, we're able to prove that this proliferation and remodeling takes place and support in the dermal epidermal junction and the results in the gradual uh, the results are gradual and not reversible so the the results actually are increasing over time as the continuation of treatments will support each other so we've been able to prove the dermal thickness of the skin will increase by 0.5 mil so quite an considerable increase in the thickness. Um, this is after five months. Um, and so this is shown 400% increase in the thickness of the dermal dermis after six months. So the levels and the regeneration and remodeling will be linked to the genetics, the lifestyle, the age and the health. So we have both intrinsic and extrinsic factors to consider. Um, and so it's very important that the treatment um, is combined with support in a good consultation um, for your patients. So in my consultations, I do explore a little bit my patient's lifestyle choices and what she can do to support the treatment. It is on its own a, a fully organic treatment and we are relying on the glycoproteins, stem cells, growth factors within your patient's own body um, to deliver these um, nutrients and um, to benefit the skin. And so if at all you're feeling that your patient um, could possibly clean up a lifestyle um, with induced hydration, um, a good range of skincare products to support the treatment, and um, and then also consider her diet as well. So and possibly dietary supplements if she's not already uh, eating a healthy, well balanced diet. All these things will affect uh, her body's ability to respond to the injuries that we create. And in 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 response to those injuries, um, how it will lay down this new proliferation tissue to mature um, over time. So if we want to take a further or deeper look into these three phases of wound healing, we have um, the first phase, um, which is the inflammation phase, um, which um, also has the hemostasis and coagulation. So in this first phase, our sensory nerve endings will send these signals to our brain, um, which will respond initially with an increased flow of blood and um, and this blood will um, create erythema and edema in the skin, which your patients will witness during the course of the treatment, sometimes with some tightness and tenderness. Uh, and sometimes in inflammation, you can get um, momentarily a loss of sensation in the skin. I find this doesn't happen at all in my microneedling because remember, we're doing very uh, acute injuries so there's no fibrosis there's no scarring induced it's all about precise um, minimal injury 
Okay, so the bleeding, um, your body will then control the bleeding and there'll be a contraction of the capillaries um, and the blood will deliver the platelets. It'll be blood that's particularly rich in white blood cells um, and they will be responsible for the coagulation to form um, to stop the body from bleeding out. Um, the delivery in these um, rich blood of the neutrophils, macrophages and um, cytokines which are very important and responsible for the secretion of the antibacterial chemicals to make sure that the wounds are safe. Um, it'll remove any um, foreign particles or narcotic skin tissue that needs to be broken down so these macrophages will go phagocytic and engulf any dead skin tissue. Um, and then also they will be responsible for initiating the angiogenesis and the granulation process. So remember these three phases um, of wound healing overlap in time. You don't finish phase one and enter into phase two. The three phases will overlap. So before you end inflammation, you will already have started um, forming some new granulation tissue. So tissue proliferation will already have started within 24 hours of your injury. So this second phase that we call um, tissue proliferation um, will have our fibroblasts proliferating. So not only will the fibroblasts move into the wound site, um, but they will also proliferate and start to pre reproduce. Um, our fibroblasts will be responsible for releasing growth factors, messaging signals, glycoproteins and collagens. Um, so these um, epidermal cells will migrate to, to the wound area and we'll have some epithelialization um, with the formation of some new immature granulation tissue. Um, and as that wound starts to contract, the skin will continue to feel tighter. Um, the erythema should have calmed down, um, but the um, skin will still feel tight. With angiogenesis, there will be some new capillary formation and repairing of capillaries. And the capillaries will be absolutely key for delivering all the micronutrients to the area that needs them. So this tightness as the keratinocyte cells migrate to tighten up and close the wounds um, will start to ease towards the end of the proliferation phase. So proliferation can continue from day one, um, typically up to a week. Um, and that immature type 3 collagen will then be laid down and um, will be sort of developed and reorganized to form this type 1 collagen, um, which will be um, much more robust and stronger. Um, there'll be much more increased tensile strength. Sorry, I've not been a bit slow moving the slides on. So here we have this tissue proliferation phase, as we talked about the fibroblasts being very active. And continuing to proliferate um, and that will lead us into this immature um, temporary type 3 collagen um, reforming itself to um, type 1 collagen, which will be much stronger and more robust. So this phase, the um, tissue remodeling phase or the final phase, um, can typically carry on for over 300 days. So a patient can benefit from a single treatment uh, for over 300 days post treatment date. So benefits for the treatment of this treatment um, will be not just on the skin tightening or not just on improving acne scarring or trauma scarring but also to improve the um, pigmentation in the skin or, or any um, discolorations in the skin as it's quite likely to be an exfoliation after the treatment. Um, it'll support um, the skin integrity and um, we will just get this all over radiance and glow um, post the treatment as well as obviously um, plumping and tightening the skin, as you would expect with new collagen formation. Um, like I said earlier, these um, three phases of wound healing are very much um, affected by each individual um, patient's um, ability to recover from the wound.
wound and that can be quite unique um, various factors can affect that such as a patient's age um, sex um, their um, diet their lifestyle choices so lots of things um, will affect their ability to wound heal and they need discussion uh, in the consultation beforehand so you can prepare your patients um, so when we look at these three phases of wound healing and we have the um, micro injuries there um, releasing the platelets uh, in the blood in the rich blood that's delivered at the time of the treatment um, key for carrying all the nutrients um, and then when we look at the second slide this is one of our um, scans to prove the increase in dermal thickness um, of 0.5 mil um, over this is five months after treatments and then in our final picture here we're looking at the, the tissue uh, and we're proving um, up to 400% more collagen. So just when you see the slides, you can already see the increase in the, um, in the capillary network. So with that much stronger capillary network, um, we're going to get much more nutrients delivered to the surface of the skin, um, which will better feed the skin for the future. So much more collagen, um, much healthier looking skin. Okay, so having talked about how microneedling works um, by inducing these injuries so that your body creates more of its own natural collagen. So the results you can expect are um, very natural looking. So your patients are going to look um, healthy, radiant, fresh, youthful, um, which I think um, is the, a general trend with anti-aging now is to maintain your unique features, but look like you on a good day. Um, and that's really what this treatment does for you. So now that I um, have sort of um, talked about the benefits of having microneedling, um, some of the other things I've not really mentioned is that compared to other modalities, we have very little adverse reactions, um, very little contraindications. Um, it's suitable for all skin types and it can be carried out through the all year round through tan, on tan skin. Um, so for me, one of the primary reasons I love doing the treatments is the radiance and glow is addictive, but I sleep really well at night after I've done a microneedling treatment because I know I've made um, a big difference to my patient's skin, but I know I'm not going to get lots of concerned phone calls because there's just so little risk of adverse reactions um, compared to other treatments that get the same level of results. So that for me is why I really think microneedling um, is, plays an absolutely um, pivotal role in the range of treatments I offer my patients. So once I decided I wanted a microneedling device, there's many different factors you must consider as not all microneedling devices are equal. And when we make these decisions in our clinics, I think the, the most important thing um, that you must always consider is the safety to the patient. Um, so when we start thinking about safety, um, let's have a little look at what Skin Pen Precision has done uh, for the safety of patients going forwards. So Skin Pen Precision recognised um, a hole in the market for a truly sterile device um, so all the pre predecessors um, couldn't claim they were truly sterile and there were starting to be cases of cross-contamination from patient to patient where even though devices may have a sterile needle head um, they were being put onto a dirty device um, because it's impossible to truly sterilize the motor element of the pen so blood was passing through these needle heads into the pen itself, um, harboring there uh, in the little cracks and crevices within the pen. And then when a new clean needle's put on, they were cross-contaminating from patient to patient. Um, so this really did concern me. So I started to look for a device that um, would address this problem. So let's just have a little look what skin pen does to address this problem. So skin pen precision is comprised of a reusable motor unit designed to attach to a sterile disposable cartridge that houses 14 microneedles, these 32 gauge stainless steel needles, um, on a reciprocating head 
which when activated and placed properly against the skin can create hundreds to thousands of micro punches in the skin. Skin pen precision's patent pending cartridge design inhibits the entrance of fluids, ingress protection of up to 100% ultra, uh, ultrasonically handheld pen device preventing potential cross contamination um, of the motor. Um, unit between you so what this really means is that the pen itself is fully sealed so there are no cracks um, that can hold bacteria or bloodborne bacteria um, and then also the what they have done is they have taken the um, part of the device that changes the depth of the pen so the the where you turn the, the needle depth up or down, they've made that part of the disposable element. So most pens have this part in the device, in the handheld device, the motor part, um, whereas skin pen precision have made this part of the disposable unit. So not only do you get a disposable needle head attached to that is the de changeable device. So the whole thing goes in the bin every time for every single patient. So this way we can absolutely guarantee there's no risk of cross contamination. Um, further measures that have been taken to prevent cross contamination are also that they have switched the male and female components um, of the needle head. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that next. Um, but before I move on, I must mention they also have a bio sheath. Um, so this is really like a glove that protects the motor itself. Um, from your glove and from your hands which are touching your patient's face and so um, to have a, a full protection for the pen itself because we know we can't dip these pens in barbicide or you know there's no true way to um, put your pen in an end cave to sterilize it um, so we must put a protective sheet over the pen. So these three main um, attacks to avoid cross-contamination that have been addressed is first the cartridge is double lined. Um, so that means the disposable element is double lined, um, providing um, ingress protection so that no um, liquids can pass from the disposable element into the motor element because it's double lined. Um, Secondly, the motor element itself um, is ultrasonically sealed. So if somehow something was to touch the outside of that pen, it can't penetrate into the body of the pen itself. And then thirdly, by having the sheath as well um, to protect the exterior of the pen. So the, the Skin Pen Precision was the pe first pen on the market that had FDA clearance and a CE mark. So it currently has the highest standards um, really across all nations. So it has its ISO certified for quality and assurance, its BSI kite mark, um, which is saying that it's safe, reliable and conforms to all relevant safety standards. It was the first completely de uh, sealed device on the market. Um, and because it's ultrasonically sealed base, there is zero risk of cross contamination, making it the treatment or the device of choice for work within surgery um, and um, in any sort of high risk situation because it, it is so, so well sealed. So no bodily fluids can enter into the device. Um, the d disposable needle tips act as a disposable pen because not only does it have the needle, it also has the device attached and the whole thing goes in the bin every time. Uh, a disposable uh, sheath to protect the body of the pen and again a fresh one is included in the kit so you get a fresh one every single time. And the 14 sterile um, precision needles. Um, a little bit more about needle quality, having worked with lots of different micro needling devices. And not, as you know, as surgeons, not all needles are equal. Um, so, what I find with these, these needles is they stay particularly sharp for a long time. They are, in fact, guaranteed for 90 minutes of continual use, making it possible to treat a second area um, within one treatment um, appointment. 
uh, which means it's a better profit margin for your for yourself as a clinic, um, but also um, economically viable for your patient too. Um, but also by having such sharp needles, you find you get no rips, tears or drags, um, which means a much quicker recovery and the body's more able to focus its attention on making the right type of collagen with no concerns that it needs to make any scar tissue because of excessive trauma caused to the surface of the skin um, by hooked needles or blunt needles. Uh, and then finally, the device is wireless. Um, so um, not only is the device wireless, but the, the motor that they have is so reliable and consistent. So I've never had the problem of my device um, failing during the course of the treatment because if it's fully charged up every night, it works all day the next day um, without having to be recharged. So it's a really reliable motor motor and it gets rid of the problem of having a wire that dangles down over your patient's body or over your body or potentially uh, from body to body um, risking contamination again. Okay so um, a little more about the um, needles um, so demonstrating the ability for the needles to perform consistently across extreme thicknesses the needle performance can meet the customer needs so as part of its testing um, the needles were tested on all all types of skin on all areas of the body so even on the thickest skin uh, we were able to get um, consistency and reliability with the needles puncturing the skin um, and creating the right type of injury uh, and further back to our fluid ingress protection, um, these cartridge heads have been sort of double sealed to prevent the risk of fluids um, passing um, from one element of the pen to the other element of the pen. Uh, we call this um, ingress protection. So the cartridge heads are also developed uh, to avoid suction. So we know we need to avoid suction. Um, and then also one of the downsides to suction is you can get uh, dragging um, or, or the sort of tram line effect on skin. Um, so through having little holes in the side of the cartridge, we are able to prevent any suction from the cartridge head. Um, this, the cartridges are also developed with um, a lockout, which means that once the cartridge has been applied to the pen, it can't be reapplied later um, because the cartridges are designed for single use, um, again, to prevent cross-contamination and to maintain the efficacy of the treatments because the needles will be perfectly sharp and sterile every time a patient receives a treatment. So... Throughout the rigorous testing that were, the device went under, they were able to prove that the pen consistently performed at exactly the same um, depth and accuracy every time. So a little bit more about the ingress protection. So uh, this is explaining a little bit about the male and female parts in the pen. So in this slide, we can see on the left, um, the skin pen precision, and it has the male element of the pen um, on the body of the uh, mechanical device, opposed to other devices that has the female element of the pen. So the receiver or the hole, you could say, uh, inside the mechanical device, um, both with the opposite uh, in the cartridge head not having a hole in the pen itself this contributes being able to make sure that the pen itself um, can't receive any um, bloodborne bacteria unlike the device so they've switched the male and the female uh, that creates the pumping action in the motor um, to help prevent the risk of cross-contamination 
So again, reiterating these three steps that skin pen precision takes to um, guarantee that there is no risk of cross contamination and um, all fluid ingress protection um, is um, absolutely um, safe and protected. Okay, so next I'd like to look at um, some of the results that can be achieved with microneedling. Um, we have a, a picture here of a lady who's 66. She's had two procedures, very typical of a patient that I would see. Um, at, this is not my slide, but it's very typical of what I'd see, where you can see an improved integrity in the skin, uh, improved support, um, a softening of the lines and wrinkles, um, as well as um, clarity through her skin, so um, improving on the pigmentation in the skin too. So all round, and that's just two treatments. Also here we can see um, some scar treatments. So skin pen precision was initially developed to treat acne scarring and, um, and further um, now we're using it widely for lots of other treatments, stretch marks, um, scalp treatments for hair, um, solar lentigines on the back of the hands, décolleté treatments, and um, fine lines and wrinkles of the face. But primarily its initial clinical trials were all developed on acne scarred skin. So we have a lot of evidence improving, uh, a lot of evidence proving um, great improvement uh, in the skin uh, of acne scarred patients. And again, another patient here with acne scarring, and we can see not just improved um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but also the indentations in the skin and um, just the general appearance is much smoother. Um, and that is after five procedures. So when a patient normally comes to me with acne scarring, I normally prepare them for um, a course of six treatments once a month and I would look for them to make the, the final review of the treatment not before a year because remember we talked about it really does take a year to get um, the, the final results for this this maturation for this collagen to lay down and really start to see your long-term effects. So short-term effects are very addictive. Um, most of my patients adore the short-term benefits, but the real integrity in the skin takes time to develop and, um, and really come through. So make sure in your consultations you fully explain the difference between short-term benefits and long-term benefits so that your patient's expectations are realistic and that way you'll get um, satisfied patients every time. Okay, so these are the contact details. Um, if you come to the decision uh, that skin pen precision is the right decision for your safe incisions. Um, so this is how you can contact uh, Skin Pen UK. Um, I think I, I hope you've enjoyed my talk about why I think microneedling is great um, for your clinic. And, um, and I've got some questions coming up, so I want to make sure I have time to address those. So I will uh, end my presentation now and go on to Q&A. That was great. Thanks, Heidi. Um, yeah, there are loads of questions. So I'm going to just, I'm not sure whether this will change for everyone's screen. Um, if I just change, has that changed and got rid of the presentation so you can see it's a bit bigger? Um, yeah, that was brilliant, really informative. Um, so, okay, let's start with some of these questions. So, um, someone has asked what length of needles you would use for acne scarring. Um, and obviously, I know with skin pen, you can adjust your needle depth. So what would you do for acne scarring? Okay, so um, generally when we treat acne scarring, we want to be in the dermis rather than the epidermis. Um, but the depth of different people's dermis uh, really varies. So typically somebody, um, I'm being very general and vague now, but typically somebody that's suffered with acne scarring has slightly thicker skin and so I would typically be looking um, between 1 and 1.5 mil um, because I'm in the dermis I would be looking for pinprick bleeding um, rather than no blood so I always think of epidermis no blood dermis blood so we want to be as deep as it takes to get pinprick bleeding um, which for me is normally around 1 and 1.5 to 1.5 mil 
Great. And someone um, on that as well, someone else had um, asked, what would you always want to bring blood to the surface during the treatment? So, I mean, like yeah. you just said, I guess it depends, doesn't it, what you're treating? Exactly. Yeah. So for acne scar treatment, so if our target is dermal, then yes, we want blood. Um, but for m vast majority of treatments, we don't want blood. So all anti-aging treatments, we want to be epidermis, no blood. Um, for, for pigmentation, we want to be in the basal layer. So right at the bottom of the epidermis, so almost blood, but still no blood. So a lot of treatments are no blood. Um, so initially, when we first started microneedling, it was very bloodthirsty and everyone thought of the Kim Kardashian vampire facial but um, now a lot of what is perceived to be blood is topically applied through PRP treatments rather than actually dripping blood during the course of the treatments. Yeah. Um, do you have difficulties with treatment uptake due to downtime um, and do you always use a topical anaesthetic to minimise discomfort? Um, yeah okay so um, yes and yeah uh, yes and no. I have um, there's very little downtime after this treatment it's one of the reasons i love the treatment is people can come if they want to come they can come every three weeks i recommend at four weeks um and there is very little downtime so really 24 hours typically um you're going to be a little bit red um but a typical patient's normally recovered within 24 hours so you might be a little bit um flaky if your skin is quite dehydrated um, but generally you're good to go the next day so you don't need time off work brilliant uh, and your other question was yeah. um remind me sorry oh, no um will you do you use topical anesthetic with every patient in every instance yeah so um i don't use topical anesthetic through the scalp when i'm treating the scalp um and i don't use topical anesthetic for the back of hands um however the face and the decollete i do and the body for stretch marks and things i would and the reason is i don't want to um compromise the quality of my treatment because my patient's wriggling around mm. um it really doesn't need to be uncomfortable um, so I always do use topical anaesthetic face, except of course if they have a, a reaction to it. Um, so if a patient's never had topical anaesthetic, I'd have done a patch test in the consultation. Um, so I do, I do use most of the time topical anaesthetic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone is asking how microneedling compares to Profilo, which is better. So this may or may not be something that you feel like you can answer, but. Do you have an, um, an opinion? Um, yeah, I have an opinion, um, but it's not fact based because I didn't do a clinical trial. Um, so it really is just my opinion. Um, but I would say um, Profilo is is a great treatment. Microneedling is a great treatment. And actually, you can have both treatments. Um, but I don't believe Profilo um, gets the same benefits in the integrity in your skin. It's more of a moisture and it, and it fades. So you have it, you put it there, but it does fade. Whereas... Um, that's a very ignorant understanding of Profilo, I guess, to a Profilo expert. Uh, whereas my understanding with microneedling is that I'm um, giving the whole system a kick of the backside, basically. So I'm um, reminding you to do the work yourself uh, and it will be an ongoing result and you'll see results for much longer than you would with Profilo. Um, so, and also it addresses a wider range of um, problems than what Profilo would address. Great, thank you. Uh, so similar in terms of um, comparing, combining the other treatments, someone's asked, can we combine microneedling with mesotherapy or peeling? Yeah, definitely. Um, peeling, I still find questionable. I know lots of clinics that do want to prep the skin with the peel before they do microneedling. Um, my experience is if the patients, uh, if I want to go deeper in the skin, I just turn my pen up another click. So I don't need to thin the skin before I do the microneedling because my needles will penetrate any depth of skin that I want. So I don't believe really in pre-peeling um, and I think it slightly oversensitizes the skin but also if the skin is dehydrated and needs to shed then all my patients will shed in the week after microneedling if they need to but it's not a forced peel it only happens if your skin feels it needs to peel so I prefer it over a chemical peel which is a forced peel which is um, thinning the outer layers of your skin um, whether you need to or not, it's a forced peel. So um, I prefer it from peeling, and I, I, but I know a lot of clinics that do combine with peels. Mesotherapy is, is a 
marriage made in heaven in my opinion um i think microneedling works really well with me with mesotherapy particularly in patients that need that extra help and support so mesotherapy being the use of um micronutrients that are only pharmaceutical grade so i must clarify you can't use any old mesotherapy it must be the right grade mesotherapy because we're putting holes in the skin that go quite deep and so the, you can't use a topical grade product at the same time as microneedling unless it's a pharmaceutical grade so that's that's really important or else you can get an adverse reaction um but then once you've got the right grade of product then yes i think they work really well and I, how i would do that is i would um apply mesotherapy in areas of need so from myself maybe nasolabial folds or crow's feet or whatever um and then i would topically apply further ampules um during the microneedling process so i wouldn't use the mesotherapy topically before microneedling because it just runs off the surface of the skin so it's immediately after microneedling you get a temporary dehydration and the skin skin will drink up your mesotherapy then so that's the time to apply it is immediately after um, or during the microneedling. Great thank you. Um, what if so contraindication potentially question what if your patient is taking meds and um, blood thinning meds? Yep so it really depends on how blood thinning they are so if they're just having a, a an aspirin um, then I would not have a problem with that um if they're on quite a high dose of warfarin then it's a problem and no i would it's definitely a contraindication so it depends on what level of blood thinners it is um we're not really um and it also depends on what depth you want your treatment to be so if it's a relatively epidermal treatment um so you're not going too deep and they're just on a low level of um anticoagulant then it wouldn't be a problem um but if they are sorry not anticoagulant blood thinners um then um but if they are on a higher dose and you're wanting to do a dermal treatment then it becomes a greater problem so it really it's case by case great thank you um we have quite a few more questions but we're gonna have to wrap up soon so i'm just gonna do one or two more um so let's ask um if you were treating the scalp someone's asked what aftercare what would aftercare be yeah and i can see one here about what depth so scalp i go 0.5 mil and aftercare don't wash your hair for 24 hours and they should be taking um nutritional supplements with biotin in um but no other specific so um have a treatment once every two to four weeks um 0.5 mil and get the nutritional support to to help that on and maybe a meso ampule with um, nutrients in during the treatment great um there's quite a few questions here around um the the sort of the price and more of the details about the skin pen device itself so you can always get in touch with skin pen we'll flash the contact details up again um in a sec you can get in touch with those questions for skin pen specifically and then because we do have to finish now what we can do um we will make a note of all these questions um and we can always take this over to facebook and heidi if you wouldn't mind you can perhaps answer some of them in the comment section um yeah. but thank you so much for all your questions everyone i'm so um, pleased there are so many questions we will absolutely get back to every single yeah. question yeah no we'll make sure um all your questions are answered thank you heidi for what's obviously been a very engaging and interesting talk Good. um enjoyed it uh, and thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, yeah, and we will make sure that all the other questions get answered, but hopefully um, some of them have been already. Um, great. All right. Well, thanks so much, Heidi. And we will see you all um, throughout the day and the rest of the week, everyone, for more sessions for virtual week. Great. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.